Yo, what is good, YouTube, and welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're going to be doing gameplay with the brand new Amethyst Sean Bradley. Literally, the point of this gameplay is to see how good matching is this year with a true giant because we've seen Wimby and KP and a couple cards like that who had really, really low overall cards but be a little bit cheesy as mashers but also get very well neutralized. How is a much better inside card like a Sean Bradley who's still incredibly slow and can't shoot but is going to be more dominant on the inside? How well can he compete against a top big man um being seven foot six but honestly stat and badge wise not looking too incredible and having some significant liability so interested to see how this card works and what this means for the rest of 2k24 my team to be completely honest to see what these types of bigs are going to look like this year but before we happen to the video if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button help me push towards the 15,000 subscriber mark on the channel i upload every single day generally six or more videos daily so would really appreciate it if you'll do subscribe for great my team content but without further ado let's hop right into it let's take a look at sean bradley so you're looking at a seven Seven foot six center 88 offensive and 83 defense 69 driving laps a little low but 87 close shot cannot shoot the ball really 59 mid he might be able to make a wide open but 85 standing duck is good 65 driving duck not so much 82 free throw is good i'll take that um low pass sack means he's going to throw a lot of floaters but 93 block 89 interior 89 offensive and 92 defensive rebounding he's going to be a dog on the interior defensively but 25 speed speed ball and lateral quickness as well as excel he is going to move like a snail on the defensive end of the court and in transition but two offs are back down punisher and brick wall 11 golds are area wizard drop stepper masher rise up post playmaker anchor chase downers post lockdown workhorse box up beast and immovable enforcer and then silver post spin and needle threader so a lot of defensive badges and interior badges on both ends of the court not really anything in terms of shooting playmaker or anything of that sort and that does not surprise me i don't expect him to be able to do much if any of that but i do want to see what the release is looking like how the card is looking on paper all those types of things number one we know he's a giant he's absolutely huge but that should not be a surprise he's got brooke lopez base which is not a good jump shot uh, honestly and then you put that with a 59 mid-range and you are not going to be able to shoot super consistently from the mid-range but he will maybe occasionally knock down a mid-range i guess it's better than like a shack or a will release even if it's not very good uh, but 59 three ball is pretty 59 uh, mid range, I should say, is pretty low. Uh, 25 three ball is unmakeable. So, all this card will really be able to do is drop step and dominate on the interior because he's so dang big. Uh, outside of that, I'm not sure how much this card really does. Um, maybe I'm crazy, but I don't know. I, I think he's going to be like. I think, I think he'll be fine. I think he's going to be really big. I think he's going to be really annoying because he's going to have some possessions where he's going to do some stuff that is super mashy and things. But then there's going to be other possessions where he's going to be tired and he's just going to miss. I feel like height is less important than it was last year and in previous years, which is something that I am a fan of. I think height has been too important in 2K. Um, so I think it's definitely going to be less important this year. And it seems like that way anyway. So I don't know how good this Sean Bradley card really can be with only 25 speed. It's not like he has this insane bag of being able to stretch the floor or anything like that. I don't know if this card is all that good, but post hooks with him might be kind of cheesy because he's so big might be tough to contest especially if you guessed the side wrong so we might try that out as well but we're gonna have to start to see what this sean bradley card can do so without further ado let's hop into a game see what sean bradley can do all right going up against mitch richmond Kyrie, jeremy grant sean kemp and jabari smith while this isn't the best team in the world it's an okay squad and sean kemp versus sean bradley is literally the app <laughs> it's just two different worlds colliding you have a super slow unathletic center in sean bradley who is just really really big and then you have a much more athletic guy in sean kemp who doesn't have the size or interior ability of a sean kemp this makes for a really interesting matchup and honestly a matchup that i'm not sure which which guy is going to win so throw it into sean bradley let's go post up immediately I know Sean Bradley should win this matchup if he doesn't foul. That I am not too worried about. The Kyrie Irving, I understand sizes not, may not be as important this year, but it's important enough that a six foot two dude versus a seven six foot six dude that is going to go the seven foot six dude's guy dude's way every single time so don't think that's something you really have to worry about he just got like totally ran around by sean kemp i'm not sure he's gonna put up much if like there's no lateral resistance whatsoever by this card defensively the only resistance he's going to have is if he is in front of you on the interior otherwise he's simply just not going to put up a lot of resistance he's also so slow that it is actually hard for him to slip effectively and really create a lot of space on a pick and roll but if he does get a good position you should get that result and that's exactly what we just got so it's just a little bit of a weird weird type of card i guess if that makes sense you have to play really really far off of guys defensively and i it's gonna get up stuff like that he just doesn't have the mobility to where he can close out to a push pop that's a quality push pop right there i was playing lower to try to give up the, to not give up the rim run and he did a really good job there um drop stepping again this is where the size matters though he does get fouled there which i think is probably the only reason he missed it uh, at least i hope it is but he's a good free throw shooter that's that's a positive 
82 for though. Of course, I missed the first one because number one, I was low on stamina. Number two, I smoked the release. The second one goes down, though. And kind of surprised that was only 63% because he does have an 82 free throw rating. I would expect the free throw percentage to be a little higher, but maybe I just mistimed it again. But uh, play defense here. Try not to get blown by is maybe the most important thing right now uh, with Sean Kemp is just don't let him completely torch you. And we don't let him completely torch us, but now it's Mitch Richmond. And now we're X switching. We're going to go hide him in the corner and run with Jabari Smith. Changing my defense a lot. He's just trying to attack Sean Bradley, and I really don't, don't, don't blame him. Luckily, Kawhi can contest there. We're able to help over and get the contest because Sean Bradley... The defensive mobility is non-existent with this card. The offensive glitchiness with this card is not non-existent. He is glitching a little bit right now on the inside. Has seven points. Uh, only miss is the free throw that he missed so far. And there we go. He ran right into my body that time. So we can get stops if you run into my body. It's, it's where he runs around me. And when Sean Bradley's trying to keep up in the full court and in transition and stop a three hunt and guard a pick and roll or pick and pop, that's where it's tougher. Right? Like right there, again, the push pop gets wide open because Bradley just doesn't have the acceleration, the speed or anything to close out and contest that type of shot. So attacking downhill again, Sean Bradley off the pick and pop, 25-3 ball. This is a buck. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's pretend I didn't shoot that. I had to though, right? Like, screw it. I get a wide open shot. I feel like I got to shoot it. He's pulling on the break with Sean Kemp and Green. A good shot by my opponent. He is low-key dogging me out with Sean, Sean Kemp right now. And now he's got play take. That's not great. Uh, attack downhill again. Now uh, throw the back door again. I'll get in the post again. And Sean Kemp is going to get thrown around. Well, that works too. This is our best bet of scoring with Sean Kemp, though. Or with Sean Bradley, I'm going to be honest. Is literally just backing down, drop-stepping anybody in our way, or just catching and going up if we get good inside position. Uh, I'm going to quick slip him here, probably to be completely honest, because I just want to get him going downhill toward the rim before I throw the pass. Gets him into the post, but he's freaking blinking. He's not making this, by the way. Oh, he did make it. I'm surprised. With him blinking, I expected to miss that shot. I think it's mainly because he's 7-6 again, and because he didn't click on with Kemp, he could have clicked on and put a right stick up and gotten a contest, probably. He did not. That is kind of his fault. Uh, I can't guard Sean Kemp, honestly. Like if he, I have to hope that he misses that shot, because with slashing take, I just can't afford to play high on him with, uh, Paul, with Sean Bradley. But throw the slip again, throw it inside, and go up again. And there's the first miss of the game. When you get contested this year, I I'd be interested to see what his layups looked like without layup timing. Because I feel like layup timing might even make mashing worse for Giants. Because if you don't time the layup well on a contest, it's not going to go in. Whereas the, the contest might go in uh, otherwise. Like again, I don't feel like that's going. Yes. See, mashing just isn't as good as it was last year. Especially when you're blinking. When you're blinking, you're just not going to get the right animations or make the shots that you really want to hit, I would say. Uh, which is okay, but it's kind of annoying, I guess. Um, we'll switch this here. Guard up on the interior. Wall up. He will wall up amazingly, though. If he gets inside position, he should be able to get the stop every single time. Great wall up defense there. He's got really high interior, and he's going to get a ton of interior stops when he has good positioning. The problem is, can he get you enough on the interior offensively to be a, to be a viable option offensively? And I don't think the answer is yes, because he just doesn't move quick enough. Like, I quick slip him there. And Sean Kemp still almost gets back to it. It takes him forever to get downhill and do anything at the rim is the biggest issue. But 11, and then you see again, transition is just so slow. It makes it so tough. It's a card like this is very interesting because they do have some legitimate strengths that make them very glitchy, but he's just not good enough statistically yet to really justify a spot on anybody's team, in my opinion. Um, that's obviously just my opinion, but I would not personally probably use this card. I don't feel like I'm going to make that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just don't trust my ability to make a mash. I don't think mashing is good enough right now, which honestly I'm fine with. I don't think Sean Bradley needs to be scoring every play just because he's seven foot tall um, or seven foot seven, I should say. But look at the defense laterally. He's got to guard Kyrie out on the perimeter. Oh, this is easy money. This is easy money for Sean, Camp, uh, Sean Bradley. Ah, get back. Block him. Oh my goodness. There's the length. Seven, six is glitchy, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, he can't really keep up, but he's going to get some glitchy animations and do some glitchy things because he's so big. And that is nice. I like that mashing doesn't seem like it's quite as OP this year with size, and I just can't keep up laterally at all. There's just no chance of keeping up laterally with the Sean Bradley. We're going to go straight pick and roll here, and I'm going to take my bucket off the screen with Donovan Mitchell if I have to. I am not messing around here. I'm trying to hit a game winner, and if it's not going to be a Sean Bradley bucket, it's not going to be a Sean Bradley bucket. It is going to be a Sean Bradley bucket, though. Throw it into him. He catches in front of Sean Camp. It's a good thing it was, too, because Donovan Mitchell was not open. I did not get Kyrie to contact that screen. 2.4 seconds left, though, and we might win the game pretty much thing handedly off the shoulders of Sean Bradley. He's got all 13 of our points, gotten us a couple of defensive stops as well. Uh, offensively, it has been a struggle, but it is certainly still a winnable game, and that's what I love to see. Contest out here on Sean Bradley, uh, Sean Kemp. Yep, he tried to do too much. 
He tried to do too much, and we're going to get ourselves a W. Finishing with 13 and 1 on 6 of 10 from the field. Sean Kemp dogged us out, though. You see it. The defensive trade off is definitely there. So that's going to do it for this one, though. Let's hop back into the main menu. Let's give you the card. As a whole, Sean Bradley played pretty good offensively, 60% from the field, and that included a terrible three ball. So he's really six and nine inside the paint, which was fine, but he's not matched up against the most elite defensive big in the world. I mean, honestly, Sean Kemp is not an elite level defender. He's not terrible on the defensive end, but he's not incredible. And we did struggle, and Sean Kemp cooked us offensively. Shaq, Wilt, and B, they're going to do dangerous things to the Sean Bradley card. Jaron Jackson Jr., too. Guys like that, the top bigs, they're going to do bad things to the Sean Bradley card on this defensive end of the court. He just cannot stop a moving. Uh, he can't. He couldn't guard a parked card. He just couldn't. But he's gigantic, which is cool. Is he a card I'd recommend using on a consistent basis? No. He could be a cheesy card to have off the end of your bench for one offensive possession, though. No, I don't know. Matching is still going to be good this year with Giants. It's not going to be as good as it was last year, which I am a fan of. But it still looks like it's going to be a pretty good option to score at Leighton's Dog Hawk or that type of thing. And Sean Bradley's an interesting card, but honestly, my conclusion is not very good. So that is going to do it for this video. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Peace.